Hey everyone, Vero here with another 3D tutorial. This one is going to be on hovering, also known as prop hanging. Uh, towards the end of this video, we're also going to work on torque rolling as well. So first, let's demonstrate exactly what a hovering is for someone who doesn't really know what it is. So this is basically what hovering is going to be like. Uh, it's essentially a uh, airplane that thinks he's a helicopter, not exactly sure why, but it's extremely fun. Uh, very, very difficult as far as the maneuvers. As you can see by my sticks, I'm uh, occupying everything. Throttle, aileron, rudder, and elevator constantly. And you're going to be doing that. So it's just going to get over here real quick so it's a little closer. You can see uh, the surface is moving everything. There we go. Okay, so uh, for this, uh, you're going to see a lot of people doing this, especially the 3D people. Um, not necessarily this low. Uh, a lot of them stay around 40 to 50 feet. And that's a very good safe altitude. Um, usually when you're learning new moves, you're going to sit around 100. Um, I would personally not sit that high. Just because when you get high enough with this maneuver, it actually will disorientate you when you get lower. Um, so let me show you that real quick. So uh, right here, right around 40 to 50 feet is right here. Um, and you can always see it already looks different. You're looking at the plane at a different angle, and it, it feels completely different. If you go any higher, um, you won't really learn to move. You'll learn it completely different. Uh, and this is a very safe altitude. So let's lose control here. Let's fall over. And we can still throttle out. You can't even see the ground yet, so I'm still at 30 feet. See? So it's still a safe uh, altitude. Just make sure when you do fall, uh, never pull back on the stick. You have to throttle out because you stalled the plane and you have no uh, control. You need to throttle out to get out of it. So let's just work on the actual controls of it now. When you're hovering, um, you're going to be occupying every single uh, surface and the throttle. You're going to be adding throttle, decreasing throttle, depending on if the plane is rising or setting. The plane is naturally going to want to roll because of the engine's torque. Uh, roll to the left because the engine is turning to the right. So for this, you're naturally on any plane, you're going to add right aileron. Uh, depending on what plane you're using will depend on exactly how much aileron you use. But for most planes, it's going to be right around uh, three quarters to sometimes even full aileron. Okay, now, if uh, the plane starts to roll uh, to the left or right, first you're going to want to either look at the nose or look at the tail. I personally learned by looking at the nose. So focus on the nose and then go from there. If the nose starts to fall to the right, you're going to add left rudder. And what that's going to do, it's going to swing that tail right underneath the uh, nose again. And you're going to get you back into that 90 degree perfect hover. Now, again, if it falls to the left, you're going to add right rudder. And again, that's just going to swing that tail around and put it right back underneath the nose. The next one is going to be the elevator. This one is a little more natural because... Uh, you already use it on a daily basis when you're taking off and landing or just basic flight uh, g gaining altitude or losing altitude it's going to be the elevator if the nose starts to go down and you don't want to go down you're going to pull back on the elevator and level it out this is the same rule if you're in a hover and it starts to fall forward the nose you're just going to pull back on the elevator and it's going to swing the tail back underneath it and put it back into the hover same thing on if the plane is uh, coming back at you you're going to want to push forward on the stick and it's going to swing the tail or the yeah the tail back underneath the nose now if you happen to be practicing this with a simulator you're learning with a simulator uh, if it's Phoenix I'm not so sure about real flight because I don't use real flight but with Phoenix there's actually a trainer on here and it's called torque trainer basically what this does is it actually puts the plane in a torquing in a uh, hovering fashion and down here you can uh, maximize what you want you can do throttle only or any of those and that's gonna take away look I'm not gonna touch any of the sticks I'm just gonna sit here just using throttle so what that's gonna do that's gonna take away the other controls because if you're trying to learn all four controls at one time um, it, it kinda gets frustrating because it's a little bit more difficult to learn all at once uh, this will actually reduce down throttle or reduce down aileron or whatever so if you're doing that I would definitely recommend it if you're not that's okay too we're gonna work on how to get into the hover and stay in the hover so right now we're just gonna take off and we're gonna 
work on getting into the hover. I'm going to come in with a uh, Harrier, just a flying Harrier. And basically, hovering is just a really high alpha Harrier. I mean, the controls are basically the same. So if you can Harrier, you can you can essentially um, hover. So we're just going to increase throttle, and it's just going to stand the plane up, just like that. Come in with a Harrier, add throttle, stand the plane up. Now, as you can see by the controls, I'm using that right aileron. This plane doesn't actually need that much, so I can almost center the stick, but use a little bit, like 25% and it's going to keep that canopy facing me. I would recommend learning canopy facing first. It's going to be a little more natural to learn. Uh, and then after you get good at this, you're going to go to belly. And as soon as you learn belly, we're going to go to torque rolling. So right here, we're going to fall to the left, add that right rudder. It's going to swing that tail back underneath it like I was talking about. And let's do it the other way. Let's, let's fall to the right and left rudder. It's going to swing the tail back around. Uh, some planes are more have more authority with the tail than others. This one has great authority, so it's good to practice with. So again, we're just going to push it forward so it's falling. We're going to add that elevator and put it back into the hover. And the same thing if it falls backwards, we're going to push forward, and it's going to put us back into the hover. Now, as you can see, I'm just going to keep it right here. As you can see by the sticks, I'm not doing very much. Uh, you definitely do not want to move the sticks very much, because if you do, it's um, it's going to look like this, and you, you're just going to be you, you, you're going to be chasing the hover the whole time and it's, it's just going to look terrible and you're never going to learn. Keep those sticks very, very small. Most planes, uh, they're very aerodynamic. So once you get that plane in a perfect 90 degree, they will stay there most of the time. It's just very minor corrections, as you can see. The next thing you want, you're going to want to work on is recovering without losing altitude. So if I fall here, it's going to throttle out and pull up. Always, whenever you fall out of a hover, you're going to want to gun the throttle to full. The reason being is if I just fall over and pull back on a throttle, I'm going to hit the ground. If I'm very low, it's not really going to hit anything unless I fall on my tail. But if you're, let's say, you're practicing at 10 feet, like, like that's about 20, there's about 10. If you're practicing at about 10 feet and you fall, it's going to, it's going to fall out and crash just like that. Luckily, you know, we have a reset button. Thank you. So we're just going to hit reset, start again, and then do that. Now, if I fall out like I just did, we're just going to add throttle and gun out of it. You want to definitely practice. Uh, when, you're, when you're first starting out, instead of trying to save the hover, practice throttling out. This will save you when you bring it low to the deck and you want to look amazing. If you fall out, it's going to add throttle and gun out of it. So definitely practice getting out without losing altitude. That's going to be the second thing into hovering. Once you get good at recovering, try to keep the hover. instead. Try to save the hover instead of throttling out of it. So just like that, very minuscule. Let's bring it over here so we can actually see it. And you can also get into this with an inverted Harrier. If you're good at inverted Harrier, um, you can also get into it like that. So just like this, as you can see, the sticks are very, very small. I'm barely doing anything at all, and the plane is just staying right, right there. Now, when you're first learning out, uh, you want to sit right around 40 or 50 feet, um, not 100. I would not go as high as that, just because if I go up to 100, let's go up to 100. All right, I'm sitting right about here. You're looking at a very awkward angle. You're looking directly up the plane, and it just looks very, very weird, and it's a lot harder, honestly. So let's just kind of go back down here to about 40, 50 feet. So we're just going to hit right around here. This is about 50 feet. Um, this is still a very safe altitude, even if I'm not very good at recovering and I lose altitude when I do so. There's still plenty of altitude to save. And it's not so high that you're losing the feel for the hover as you would if you're at 100. So let's wing over here. And you can actually still recover, and I still have 20 feet to spare. So I'm still good. So let's go back down here. Let's uh, enter with an inverted Harrier. So it's going to here, same principles, we're just going to add throttle and stand the plane up. Just like that. Now once you get pro very proficient at this, we're going to just rotate the plane and we're going to catch it with belly. Now the thing about this is both the elevator and rudder controls are going to change. So you're actually going to focus on the nose and you're going to go with whatever it falls to. So if it falls left, we're just going to add left and it's going to tip it back under. If it falls to the right, we're going to add right rudder and follow it. If it comes at us, we're going to pull back on the stick. 
And if it goes away from us, we're going to push forward on the stick. The ailerons stay the, stay the same. So practice bellowing, and when we get proficient at that, take away that aileron input and just let it turn on its own. It's just going to rotate like this. And this is, this is torque rolling. Again, very small movements. You're not moving the sticks very much at all. We're just going to stay right here and just let the torque turn on over on its own. When you're learning to torque roll, I would recommend actually pushing the plane with aileron. Uh, the faster the torque, the better, the, the easier it is. Because what you can do is you can actually fix it when the canopy's facing you. Wait, fix it, wait, fix it. Fix it whenever that canopy's sh uh, facing at you because it, you're rolling so fast. The slower you rotate, the more difficult because now you have to c constantly change it when the belly is facing you, the wing is facing you, the canopy is facing you, back to the wing and back to the belly. So definitely work on that. I mean, the canopy, the belly, start torque rolling, add that aileron input to uh, make the torque accelerate faster, uh, correct it when the canopy is there then start to slow that torque roll down making it look very official and rotating slow if I missed anything I apologize if if you feel that I uh, missed something please put a comment below send me a private message anything like that I'm completely open to everything this is Voro signing off until then have fun flying